Absolutely. So what, what does the future look like for this car? Like next year, obviously going racing again with these cars, is there a schedule for obviously Lamborghinis coming in? They're they're getting involved with their hyper car setup. Uh, Alpine as well, I believe, have a car that are you know they're trying to get to that level. So it's growing. But are you guys are you guys upgrading that car per year per race? Like, is there new things that you're able to try? How does that fit into the regulations? I'm also trying to learn myself. Yeah, no. So uh, all the cars are actually locked in through 2025, I believe. Got it. Okay. Period. Um, I believe you're allowed one thing per year, one performance or safety item per year to change or upgrade. Okay. Uh, nice. But for the most part, that is pretty much what you homologated from the beginning. Uh, you're stuck with for the next couple of years. So, um, I mean, if we know now what we or what we would have would. What am I trying to say? If we knew yeah. now what we wish we would have known then, uh, I know what you mean. Don't a, lot, worry. <laughs> a lot of things we would have done differently, yeah. but, um, but Hey, I think everyone's in the same boat. So I think it's good. Again, trying to keep costs low. Uh, it helps the manufacturers. It helps us have jogs for the long term because when you start pr making prices go up, uh, that's usually when manufacturers start lo losing interest. So it's great to see the amount of like new interest coming in. Um, I know they've spoken about Alpine coming over. It seems like they're pretty serious about trying to get a car coming over so um yeah it would be it would be great to have more more manufacturer support and i think it only grows the class i mean if we get 15 full-time cars in gtp that'd be pretty awesome yeah i mean that 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 brings it to a, a pretty incredible era i mean my dad racing the gtp era way back in the day in the 90s uh and and so many people keep talking about how cool that era was um but i i'm, I'm very curious you mentioned jobs something that i don't have uh the more and more cars I mean, that's great for a wide variety of drivers. I think like you obviously Roman Grosjean, Grosjean going to be involved in that, uh, that Lamborghini program. I think you're going to see more and more guys from formula one that end up, you know, being sort of mixed in, uh, you know, in, in the, in the group there, that is a stout field. I mean, a lot of the guys that are racing in that GTP class, right. Everyone's raced against each other at some point on the ladder system, right? Like, We've all done something against someone, you know, me and you and Pro Mazda back in the day, me and Nick Yalali in GP3, you know, a lot of those other guys, Jack Aiken was Formula One, right, for a little bit. There's there's a lot of people in that category, former IndyCar drivers as well. That, I think, is strong. But what, I would say, in America, when you're fighting for viewership, you're fighting for, you know, sponsorship, money, because it costs a lot of money to go sports car racing as well. Um, do you see the health of the series as, as a strong, like obviously NASCAR is somewhat involved, right? Like that's helpful. Uh, the, uh, the governing body there some, somewhat, but do you see the health of the IMSA series? Like everything looking strong? Cause from an outsider's perspective, again, I, I would love to be racing sports cars. I would love to do more. Seems to be a very difficult world for me to jump into, but it, it looks from an outsider's perspective as quite a strong, uh, uh kind of road forward. Not like I said, I mean, they're doing, I'm pretty sure every event this year, we've had record turnout at each event. Um, so, I mean, ticket sales have reflected not, not just the hype and excitement on social medias uh, and YouTube and all, all the different areas that they've been really pushing to kind of make an impact, uh, make a footprint, let's call it that. Yes. So that's good. <laughs> it's good that you have people putting their money where their mouth is, right? They're not just excited about it on Facebook and then don't show up or don't watch the race. So they're showing up for the races. We're putting on good shows. Um, you know, you have great racing. We have four cars in the title fight and each car is from each manufacturer. So it's like the Cinderella story ending for Inside oh, yeah. the first, you know, first year with a new class. So that they're happy about. Um, and I think they're trying to do their best to control costs for sure. And I mean, you have record car counts. I mean, you have people yeah. want to um, spend, spend the money uh, and run more cars. So I think they have a really good, kind of combo going next year i think i heard they're going to have up to 15 lmp2 cars next year Big. Uh, they're, they're getting another great class MP3. too yeah like I mean, lmp2 cars, great I mean, class yeah they're lighter and have more downforce than we do so like road atlanta they were faster than through turn one than we were by like 15 kilometers per hour so, Jeez. no they're fun cars to drive um so yeah there's gonna be a lot of opportunities for people in in really cool cars and i think it's just gonna elevate the amount of talent that shows up for imsa races which in the end puts on a better show so there's a lot of cool stuff in the rumor mill. Um, you know, you saw, the, I don't know if you saw the stuff people talking about 
Vettel potentially being oh yeah Kubica and those guys running something in World Endurance Championship. So I think there's a lot of interest around sports cars. I think it kind of checks all the boxes between competition, budget, performance. You've got the green hybrid aspect. So everyone's kind of everyone's happy from all the areas, and I think the manufacturers are on board with it long term, which is important. Um, so yeah, it's a great place to be and would love to have you come join, man. It's, uh, it'd be, it'd be fun to have you there. I see Joseph's going to be a petite. I can't wait to freaking go door to door with him again. That is ho- finally love- Joseph. Ask him how it is on cold tires. Oh. And, uh, I heard he was not too fond of the braking. So it's been funny to, to hear stuff kind of through actually Scotty, I was talking to him at the gym about it, but, um, I can't wait to see him at petite and, uh, get to catch up a little bit. I mean, but that's a great, you, you mentioned Joseph hilarious that people always ask me like oh why don't you do sports car racing i'm like ask joseph why he hasn't done sport it's hard to get in that world this is now Uh, the first time that joseph is really getting a shot at the g like the top level you know i mean it's not it's not like we can just as indycar drivers we can just wander on over and be like hello everyone please Please put us (laughs) like well how much money do you have like well I'll see you guys later. You know what I mean? Or else, you know, you, all these manufacturer deals too, they're so loyal to their drivers, which I actually, I love, I respect that. Right. Like if you're a BMW guy, you're going to get the first call when you, when it comes to that GTP program, if you're a, if you're a Chevy guy, you're going to probably be in that Corvette program. You know, like Jordan Taylor's had such a great relationship with those guys over the years. Um, But, but that, yeah, that, that's, that's going to be fascinating. Joseph out there. I can't wait to see how he does. Uh, it's going to be a challenge. Uh, ben, I believe you have something for Mr. Connor. Yeah, so kind of piggybacking off what you guys were just talking about, you said you, you've been with BMW for about six years now and um, like how hard it is to break into sports car racing. Like what was that process like getting picked up by BMW and what does that really mean to be a manufactured driver from your perspective? Yeah, no, I mean, it's it's big. Um, so when my kind of career took a turn end of 2012 uh, was my last year in Star Mazda, and honestly, I was literally applying for colleges. And I was like, well, oh, road is empty. I had a bunch of empty promises to go to Indy Lights. Those kind of fell through the cracks. And uh, yeah, I was fully ready. I was kind of like, well, I, I gave it a good try. I kind of was thinking about sports cars. but And then Patrick Long uh, called me and it's like, hey, man, um, would you be interested in being potentially part of the Porsche Junior Program? I was like, of course, like whatever. <laughs> I'll drive anything with four wheels and a wheel. Um, so he said, listen, if I help you get your foot in the door for this, you have to promise me that you will completely give up on your open wheel car dream and you'll be committed to sports cars. I said, sign me up. Where do I sign up? So he got me in my foot in the door. I went over to, to Germany and was part of their shootout. There was like 10 of us, I think, um, went through a bunch of fitness and a bunch of different tests. Then they cut us down to six. Then we went to a Vallelunga, which is track in Italy. And I drove a sports car for the first time, a Porsche GT3 cup car. And then was at the end of the day selected as one of the two guys. And that kind of reignited my career and and kind of changed its path to sports cars. And I was with them for three years, part of the junior program. I had a lot of highs and lows. I lived there full time, learned German, kind of got kind of ingrained in the culture, made a lot of great friends over there. Uh, But I'll have to say it was a trying time in my career. I, I was really up against some guys. And I mean, Earl Bamber, like all these guys who I'm still racing against are actually kind of went through that same era. Um, but yeah, it was, it was tough times. Uh, it was one of those programs where it's pitched as fully funded, yada, 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 but it's <laughs> not I'm like got half the budget. You're trying to basically compete at the highest level with not all the tools you need. So, um, I mean, my last year in Monaco, I couldn't afford to get a hotel, so I literally bought a tent at the Dick Sporting Goods equivalent of France and slept in a tent on an air mattress in the in the park in Monaco by our by our uh, our our team truck. So that's what it was like for me. I did not know that. Grinding, yeah, I actually have pictures from that. It's so funny. Hey, um, people, that's dedication. Yeah, you think oh, racing is fun. It's cool. Like it's a great time. Everyone makes a ton of money, and we all have really fancy stuff. Absolutely not. Connor had to move over to Germany, learn a whole new language, get paid nothing to do things for years, and sleep in a tent on the road. Like yeah. that, I slept in a trailer. Like we've all done it. Like it's it. Th- this is this is a tough situation. It well. Some drivers have not had that, you know, difficulty to go through, but a lot of us have. And that, I mean, that's dedication. But that, like when you want to do something and look, now it works out for you. 
Now you get to drive fancy BMWs. You probably have a cool M3, M4, X5, whatever it is, fancy car at home, and life is better. But you got to put in the work to get there. I mean, that is that not right? No, that's it. I think it's uh, it can kind of get missed a little bit these days because – I think there's not quite as many of those stories, unfortunately, just with the landscape, uh, which is a little bit of a shame. But I mean, I think that makes me appreciate it more just because I, I knew I've known what I've had to go through to get here. Uh, and after all that process, you know, I finally got an opportunity with a team that had a team sponsor that really liked me. And that was my first real shot where I had my first year ever of racing where they said, listen, we trust you. We think you can do the job. We know you can do the job and do not think one minute about crash damage go out there and drive the car oh and first year won the championship next year won 24 hour nurburgring got second again in the championship like had to break out a season and that put me on the map and then after that year i had bmw calling i had mercedes amg calling and and suddenly my whole life changed just from that one season it, it really kind of proved to myself like everything i've been believing is true i just never had the the resources to really finally unlock that and that was really a, a great kind of feeling to confirm that in my own mind and that's when bmw reached out to me end of 2017 i actually won petite Le Mans, um with land motorsport uh in the audi and i signed my contract that thursday one on saturday and saw my boss in victory lane and i was like well this is a funny coincidence let's nice. see uh, you next year so <laughs> when they launched the m8 program that was my first full full-time gt uh program with the actual manufacturer and came back to america and here i am so it's been, a, it's been a journey for sure, but I do it all over.